Somewhere in the bowels of the city that never sleeps. Kevin McCullough, radio host with Salem Media. Is a man also not sleeping. Syndicated radio talk show host Kevin McCullough. And that guy would like a word with you. Many of you know him from as Lux Fridamas. Of course that Kevin show is going to be great. The only thing that could be greater, of course, would be that Donald show. But we don't have that, so we have that Kevin show. Featuring the music of Dick Tunney and the Dream in Color Orchestra. And tonight on That Kevin Show, she's a door kicker with a heart for justice. Former special agent for the FBI, Nicole Parker. He's a ranking officer in an army of normal folks. Coach Bill Courtney, Dr. Joel Velkamp with good news from the UN, and she's the national treasure that everyone adores, Dolly Parton, tonight in the spotlight. And now, from Times Square, home to at least six of the top 27 dirty water dog parts on planet Earth, here's that Kevin! Welcome to the weekend. Couldn't be happier than to uh, be welcoming you in to, uh, to yet another, I hope it's going to be a very entertaining edition of That Kevin Show for you. I want to say thank you, by the way, to our new affiliates in Danville, Kentucky, in Corpus Christi, Texas, and tonight welcoming two new stations in Oklahoma City, uh, KTLR, AM and FM, AM 890 and 103.7 FM there in Oklahoma City. I am a Texan by birth, so for me to even acknowledge Oklahoma's existence is a very big deal. You have to just understand it rubs against the grain. It's kind of like the Samaritan in the in the Bible. You, you didn't expect it, but uh, we are thrilled to be in Oklahoma City. I, uh, and I've got some really uh, good friends and family that live not far from there. So very, very happy to be there in the heart of the Plains uh, in the Midwest. And we've got some interesting stuff for you tonight, friends. I am very jazzed about this conversation we're going to have with Nicole Parker. If you don't know this this woman's story, she became an FBI agent because of 9-11. Uh, she she wanted to to give back, serve back. She was a very big success in the world of finance, and she decided to become an FBI agent. But the story as to why she left the agency only recently is equally compelling. So we'll get into that with her. And then we've got we've got a slam dunk assignment desk weekend this week. The stories they they practically write themselves. We'll also go tripping in Times Square, which will be a lot of fun. And uh, did you see that new uh, campaign commercial from Mike Pence? <clears throat> we we have we have a version that uh, he did not authorize to release to the public, and I I I was curious enough about the one that did get released. I can't wait to see the one that he didn't authorize uh, to go to the public. Anyway, it's a big big show. Thank you for being here. I don't know if you were paying attention, but the end of the work week, the last couple of weeks, has been a big news day. And on Friday, the administration. Uh, the Department of Justice uh, very quietly did a couple of things. One, it, it dropped uh, the the criminal case in Delaware uh, against Hunter Biden. Now, this was these were the criminal charges that they thought they had that slam dunk plea deal done on. And then when they went before a judge, the judge went, uh, what? N no, I don't think so. <laughs> Give you permanent immunity for anything you may do wrong in the future? I don't think so. There is no get out of hell free card just because you you gonna make a deal with me. Nope, that's not how this is gonna work. So that was kind of so now the DOJ because they're because Merrick Garland's a partisan hack, uh, he can't actually just go forward with the trial and just let Hunter be found guilty on the things that he's obviously gonna be found guilty on. So what did he do? He went back to the prosecutor, and he says to the prosecutor, "Hey, look." You, you wanted to be a special counsel before, and you've already run the story out there that I didn't I didn't let you become a special counsel. So now I'll make you a special counsel. But guess what? You won't have to get a report to me till, say, I don't know, December of 24. Will that give you enough time to work on all the stuff that's going on? <laughs> it really, When you think about it, the, the blatant, crass... Uh, nepotism and partisanship that this administration has has shown us it beats anything in the modern era i don't know of anything that's been more corrupt 
than the government in the United States these days, especially this White House, especially this president and his his lying to you and me. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just an old man. I just want to eat my ice cream. But it, behind the scenes, yeah, okay, let's get let's get let's get Hunter a plea deal. And look, they didn't take the plea deal, so we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to drop that case, and then we'll set up a special prosecutor, a special counsel, and then that that'll take at least another year and a half to get done. So we won't even have a report until after the next election. Hmm. <laughs> oh, and guess guess what? I'm betting you begin to hear uh, very very soon. Well, we can't talk about that. That's under that's under investigation. Corinne Jean-Pierre, I bet you anything, Corinne Jean-Pierre on Monday says at least once in the in the press conference at the White House, well, you know, that's under the investigation of the special counsel now. We can't talk about that. They know they know how to they know how to they know how to pick them. Well, there's other people still looking into stuff, and I don't know if you've seen this or not, but uh the House Oversight Panel, that's James Comer's committee, um just this week unloaded the latest rounds of evidence that should put a pause in every American's heart, regardless of what political party you belong to. Because what he brought to the table were receipts uh, on the paper trail of payments that have come to the Biden family from the countries of Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and others, I did not know Kazakhstan had been in the mix. Now, now I do because of this revelation. But they have actual paper trail receipts on deals in Russia, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan while Joe Biden was vice president in the Obama administration coming to the Biden family, of which 50% went to the big guy. The big guy, of course, being the man who was vice president, who had the name Biden so that everybody else could use. This is how he's this is how he's made his money. But twenty million dollars while vice president from foreign adversaries. Russia is not an ally. That's just those three countries. Twenty million dollars. So the House Oversight and Accountability Committee is going to subpoena. They announced this week. They're going to subpoena the president. They're going to subpoena the first son. The president may say, ah, executive privilege, I'm not going to come testify. But he's going to have to defy the subpoena. Hunter can't do that. And there may be others that they end up um, calling to be before them. Uh, Comer said this week, it's clear Joe Biden knew about his son's business dealings lied to the American people, and allowed himself to be the brand sold to enrich the Bidens while he was the VP of the United States. Friends, Joe Biden embodies the absolute worst instincts and worst qualities and worst possible um, model for what a public servant should ever be. He lied to people when he ran for Senate. He lied to his first wife to snag the babysitter to become his second wife. He he lies about his son's death, Bo, at every campaign stop. He claims Bo Biden died in Iraq. He died in a hospital in the U.S. He didn't die from wounds suffered in Iraq. He, he died of uh, a, a lung situation. He he. He doesn't discipline his children. He took showers with his daughter. He let his son become a drug-snorting, uh, hooker-chasing um, you know, money machine for the family. And he made sure his name was not on any of the paperwork, but he made sure that he got 50%. I can't think of a more reprobate, reprehensible example of a public servant at any level of government. I wouldn't vote for somebody like that if they were running for dog catcher. To be candid with you, I don't think that that Joe Biden embodies anything that I would that I would ever want in any elected position at any level. 
And that's the genuine problem. He's not just the dog catcher. He's the most powerful man on planet Earth, co-opting the Department of Justice, prosecuting his opponents, letting his criminal family walk free, and figuring out ways to manipulate the Justice Department to make it happen. It's disgusting. It makes me want to puke. He should be run out of town, out of office. All right. We've got some very interesting discussion coming up next. Nicole Parker joins me, former special field agent for the FBI, on exactly why she felt like she needed to leave the agency at this point in time. Coming right back from New York. 